Good afternoon. Uh, at 3 p.m. this afternoon, the Secretary General will speak at the launch of the new climate e economy report from the Global Commission on the Economy and Climate Change. He will stress that despite some encouraging momentum, climate change is running faster than we are. The trend is clear, the Secretary General will say, with the last 19 years included 18 of the warmest years on record. The Secretary General will underscore how we need climate action to prevent ever great crises, calling for all of us to act with greater amb uh, ambition and urgency. And next week, on the 10th of September at 3 p.m., the Secretary General will deliver a major address on uh, climate change, speaking uh, outside, hopefully in the, um, in the Rose Garden or in the North Lawn, speaking to an audience of young people, business leaders, uh, diplomats, and hopefully journalists on the eve of the Global Climate Action Summit in San Francisco and the annual gathering of world leaders for the General Assembly. In those remarks, the Secretary General will outline the danger, highlight solutions, and emphasize the need for greater ambition and stronger leadership in what he calls the defining threat of our time. And we hope to have more details for you on that for that speech later this week. Uh, yesterday, as you will see in a statement that we issued, the Secretary General, the UN was informed by the Guatemalan, Guatemalan authorities that they had barred Commissioner Ivan Velasquez of the International Commission Against Impunity in Guatemala from entry into Guatemala. Uh, the Commission and its commissioners play a pivotal role in the fight against impunity in the country. The, the UN Secretary has serious concerns about the decision of the government, which is currently reviewing and which does not appear to be consistent with the agreement on the establishment of the Commission. The Secretary General encourages the government of Guatemala to continue to search for a solution through dialogue in the framework of our, Article 12 of the agreement establishing the Commission. And we also issued a statement last night on Mauritania in which the Secretary General commended the people of the country for the peaceful conduct of parliamentary, regional, and municipal elections. He encourages all parties to continue to act in a peaceful manner during and after all the announcements of the results. The Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohamed will travel to the Netherlands today to discuss the ongoing reform of the UN development system and development cooperation and broader efforts to realize sustainable development goals. She will meet with government ministers, senior officials, and representatives of civil society and the private sector. On Friday and Saturday, the Deputy Secretary General will visit Ireland. While there, she will deliver key remarks and participate in a conference marking the 50th anniversary of Concern Worldwide, a leading uh, NGO on development and humanitarian issues. She will also meet with senior government officials to discuss a wide range of matters, including UN development system reform, Ireland's new development cooperation policy, peacekeeping, and migration. Ms. Mohammed will also meet with civil society and youth groups to discuss domestic implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, climate change, and gender empowerment. The Deputy Secretary General will return to New York uh, on Saturday uh, next, uh, next week. Um, the Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations, Jean Pierre Lacroix, is wrapping up a visit to Mali today in which he attended the swearing in of the President uh, Ibrahim Boubkar Keita during a press conference held at the UN's mission's headquarters in Bamako earlier this morning. Mr. Lacroix said the need for a swift implementation of the peace agreement was a priority expressed by the various stakeholders he met, including the national authorities, signatories of the peace agreement, and the Malians in general, mirroring the UN Security Council's own preoccupation. He added that the successful uh, completion of the UN's mission in Mali mandate lies in the political process that moves forward and reiterated the UN's total determination to help Malians with the road to peace and stability. During his six-day visit, Mr. Lacroix traveled to the north of the country and met with UN staff as well as government officials and others involved in the peace process. And the UN support mission in Libya issued a press release today thanking the Libyan parties who accepted the mission's invitation for dialogue and congratulates them on reaching a ceasefire agreement to end the fighting affecting Tripoli since the 26th of August. The agreement was signed under the auspices of the special representative of the Secretary General in Libya, Hassam Salame. Uh, Mr. Salame will continue to offer good offices and work with all parties to reach a lasting political agreement acceptable to all to avoid further loss of life and to benefit the people of Libya. 
The High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grande, and the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mark Lokok, are visiting Afghanistan on a two-day mission that began today. They are scheduled to meet with government officials as well as donors, development, and humanitarian partners, UN agencies, NGOs, and families affected by the conflict. Mr. Grande, Mr. Lokok will also visit Pakistan on a joint mission. We'll have more details tomorrow. Uh, I want to flag a message from the uh, activities, rather, from the humanitarian coordinator for the Palestinian territory, Jamie McGoldrick, who called for urgent funding for emergency fuel for essential services in the Gaza Strip as the supplies have depleted. Final fuel supplies for the UN coordinated emergency operation for backup generators and life saving facilities in Gaza are being delivered and exhausted. Within a week, the first hospital in Al-Aqsa, in the middle area of the Gaza Strip, may have to shut down. In addition, without fuel, some 300,000 people will potentially be affected by serious public health concerns as sewage could overflow into streets. Based on the current electricity deficit in Gaza, a minimum of 4.5 uh, million is required to sustain the essential services until the end of the year. If new funds are not received immediately, we will be facing a potential catastrophic breakdown delivering in service delivery. And the Secretary General has appointed five new members to the advisory group of the Central Emergency Response Fund, SURF, established by the GA in 2005. The 19-member advisory group provides policy guidance for the Secretary General on advice and use of uh, the SURF. And a new paper authored by four World, World Health Organization experts shows that more than one in four adults globally, or 1.4 billion, are physically inactive. The paper published in The Lancet shows the global level of inactivity in adults remains largely unchanged since 2001. WHO launched a new global action plan on physical activity that sets the target to reduce inactivity by 10% by 2025 and 15% by 2030. More information on WHO's website. Uh, a reminder to all of you to remind all your colleagues who are not resident correspondents who wish to cover the 73rd GA that today is the last chance to apply for media accreditation. To apply, please contact the media accreditation uh, unit at MALU on the web. And if uh, you have a valid UN media pass current, that is, you do not need to apply for a separate badge for the GA. Um, also, just wanted to flag, of course, that today uh, the Secretary General swore in uh, Michelle Bachelet as the new uh, High Commissioner for uh, Human Rights, and he also swore in the new Ombudswoman. Uh, those two swearing-ins bring the uh, level, uh, the the parity um, of women to men, I think 24 to 22, 24 women and 22 men in the Secretary General Senior Management Group. That's it. And I thank you. Zach, go ahead. Thanks, Stefan. Um, as we approach October, I understand Cameroon is having an election. What um, do you have any sort of update on the situation in Cameroon? And is the Secretary General concerned about um, outbreaks of violence during that election? I think the Secretary General remains, uh, the UN system remains concerned at the, the situation in the, in the uh, English-speaking parts of Cameroon and encourages uh, political dialogue to be fully uh, engaged. And we'll keep watching the situation. Paolo, and then we'll... Yes, after the uh, violence in Libya uh, and after the ceasefire, is uh, still the position of the United Nations that we should have election by December 10 in uh, Libya, or this is something that has to be uh, considered further? Uh, you know, I don't have any specific guidance uh, on that. I know the uh, special uh, representative, Mrs. Salame, is working uh, with all the Libyan parties to bring back a, bring back a political accord so that the Libyan people themselves can choose their future. Evelyn. Yeah, I was also going to ask what's the next step on Libya okay. uh, after C Anyway, uh, uh, Ambassador Haley yesterday said that the U.S. is about ready to reveal its peace plan for the Middle East and, uh, well, for the Palestinians, for whoever, 
And uh, is the UN going to be briefed on that before it's released? Well, I think the, the Secretary General has had conversations uh, with uh, Mr. Greenblatt, with Mr. Kushner not too long ago uh, on their work. Uh, and we look forward to the plan being shared with the Secretary General in due time. And is, th I'm still here. Go ahead. And, uh, any reaction to what the UK is saying on the Sol's, on the uh, Russians accused of the Salisbury no, poison? Not, not uh, anything new to what we've already said. <laughs>